What? Yeah. No, I'm... Yeah, I'm behaving myself. I'm, no, I'm not playing in abandoned buildings. What? Again? Now. I suppose you had those people follow me again. Fine. Hey, this is Jimmy Farrell from Monty and the Farrell, and I want to thank all our subscribers. We have now passed 14,000 on our YouTube channel, but I want to ask our subscribers to take the next step for us and become a full-fledged member of Monty and the Faro. Yeah, that's right, folks. There's three different levels to choose from. There's free shirts. There's free autographs. Just check it out and become a member of Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and the Faro. Later. All right, welcome to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty DeFaro, filmed out of Indie Music TV out of Ronkonkoma, Long Island. At the board, Jared Spidey. How's it going? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? All right, we're going to share with the fans out there. Uh, we had a little conversation with Jared. Jared oh, has an God. opportunity to uh, mm -hmm. hook up with a really good-looking young lady, and I told him not to because it'll just ruin <laughs> his life. <laughs> So let's uh, all put hashtag Jared no in your comments <laughs> and try to stop him from making one of the biggest mistakes of his life. Uh, how'd you make out last week at the party, Spidey? How'd, how'd you do? It was good? a good time. It was a, good, a time. good time. Had a good time? Did you get lucky or you just got drunk? No, no. Oh, okay. You just got drunk? Yeah. Ugh, that's not a good time. What the hell? Well, it's the end of the world, buddy. Yeah. A massive sunspot that could unleash significant solar flares is pointed right at us. That's the end of the world. Okay. Sunspot AR3038 was huge and even grew more prominent. The fast-growing sunspot has doubled in size in only 24 hours. Wow, look at the size of it. On you're sci-fi guy. Look at the size of it on the sun. Wow. You're, look you're, at how you're, big that is. You're a sci-fi guy. This is yeah. the beginning of the end. <laughs> That's Star Trek panic music. <laughs> You don't seem too concerned. No, I'm not concerned in the least. You know that the sun spits out stuff all the time. Yeah. So this is a really big sunspot. We're in trouble because it's pointed right it's at us. It's growing at a, an alarming rate. Alarming rate. Yeah. Okay. It's going to get really big, and then it's going to go poof, and that's going to be the end of that. And we'll all wonder what's on cable Listen, next man, week. you know what? These these sci-fi movies, maybe something, <laughs> someone, the gas prices are through the roof. Yeah, they are. World famine that's not around the corner. That, that's just, uh, I can't say. World I don't famine around the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sunspots. And sunspots. Yeah, we got problems, man. All right, since you're giving me nothing, Farrow, we're going to have to go to What am I supposed to, to give you? Else. It's just sunspot. WWE I've been seeing spots my whole life. Oh, oh, it's a sunspot. You got sunspots on your hand. Do I really? Yeah. Oh, it's the end of Jimmy. You're spotty. It's the end of... <laughs> spotty, give me a report. <laughs> WWE legend Hall of Famer is going to have partial amputations. WWE legend superstar Billy Graham has revealed that he's having a few toes partially am amputated, and he gave us fans an update on his health. The 79-year-old Hall of Famer opened up with some health issues over the weekend and announced he needs surgery to amputate his toes after he, he contracted some infections. Uh, I'm probably going to give you nothing here either. Get well, superstar Graham. Sorry about your toes. Hey, what do I see? I got, you know, dude, <laughs> Superstar Graham, what do you have, a liver transplant? He's, he's had everything taken He's had out. skin cancer. He's had everything taken He's got heart out. issues. Put back in. And that dude's like, he's hanging in there. Yeah, he is hanging in there. Does he still lift weights? Because he still seems like he's a big dude. He still seems like, <laughs> I, dude, no. That is amazing. When, when, when you, when you were looking at That's the pictures insane. of Graham, dude, that 
We, we said it all the time. That guy had it, man. Oh, he was so it. I mean, he really was. He was just a little premature for the time period. I mean, he was way ahead of his time, obviously. He Maybe you had, the, you had that superstar Graham, then he came back as that karate guy. And then uh, where would, you know, just real quick, where would you rank superstar Graham as far as all-time WWF wow. champion heels? This guy's up there. This man is up there. Superstar Graham falls into the... He He's falls in a there. separate area. He falls into the... Sure does. Uh, He's... He, fall, he falls into the gorgeous George uh, grouping, right? Like, really? Yeah, like the innovators. Yes. Before his time. Absolutely. Right? That type oh, of thing. Oh, gorgeous George. Way so do time. I put Superstar Graham in my like, top 20 wrestlers of all time? No, but do I put him as the most influential? Some of the most important? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yes, very important. Yes, absolutely. Gorgeous George, Is he Superstar one of the Graham, greatest WWF Sam champion Martino. heels, though? I think he mm. is. I think he is. Never thought of him a heel. I felt it's him he's more Hoganish. Well, yeah, he was loved, that's for sure. I guess that was working against him back in the day, being so popular for a bad guy. And if you didn't know it, that is the star of the show, Mr. Jimmy Farrow. Hello. How We'd you like doing? to thank the band that sings the theme song for Monty and the Farrow, our own Jimmy Farrow, along with his partner, Bart Griggs. Make up the band with Steer Hall. With Steer Hall sings such great songs as In My Dreams, This Life. Not far behind, here comes the rain. You can find their music on the Wisteria Hall YouTube page. Please hit that like and subscribe. Also, download their music on Spotify, Apple Music, Reverb Nation, or wherever you can download music. Mm. And if you didn't know it by now, you are watching Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, where you can see Monty Nefaro on the Monty Nefaro YouTube page. The Monty Nefaro Facebook Live page. Hear us on iHeart Radio, Spotify, Anchor, the Monty Nefaro Twitch TV page and then also if you live in new york you get to watch monty nefaro three times a week mm. channel 115 every tuesday at 9 30 30 and at 11 30 again saturday night live where we've knocked four people have retired yeah, from that show due to stuff. the power of monty nefaro and Ooh, channel 20 tuesdays at 1 a.m and a combination where over 123,000 viewers are watching us weekly in not, New York. Not for nothing, AEW uh, Rampage better watch out because we are getting close. Well, it's only going to get better because we have the special guest, Mr. Bill DeMont, who will be coming on after commercial break. I am very excited for this. Absolutely. Uh, no doubt. Bill is one of the legendary wrestlers, not sure. to mention probably talk about influential yeah. in the business. And he made so many wrestlers in the training center, sure. We want to thank Amazon Music for adding Monty and Afaro to their network of shows. We'll be right back after this commercial break with this legend, Mr. Bill DeMott. We shall return. Dino Luzzi Energy Drink. Yeah. It's that good. In the mood for a freshly roasted cup of coffee? www.offtherailscoffeeroasters.com And Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage. Ask for Jack. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and Afaro. Mr. Bill DeMott, thank you, sir, for joining us. <laughs> Hey guys, what's happening? What's going on? <laughs> oh my God. I have God. that. I, I, that's that's the only part of my entertainment that's left to go. <laughs> so we were talking right before the show when we were just trying to make a quick contact. You're growing that, that <clears throat> beard. You're looking pretty good. You look like you're in really good shape. It's uh, th Thank you. Uh, round is a shape, so I feel pretty good about that. Uh, <laughs> I can't. Uh, the oh beard. I'm on. I'm on a, a little bit of a, a sabbatical from home. I, I've been in uh, the Midwest watching my son play uh, a national tournament in uh, Omaha. So the beard kind of followed with me. But I, I can't even say it's. It's not even. It just went white. So I feel like if, if I keep building towards the Christmas time, I can get a few extra paydays in it somewhere like it out front of macy's or something ringing there a bell go. not a bad i look at you ringing the bell too you got that down you got the motion down that's not too bad yeah i was i was going to ask you if i'm on the naughty or nice list but i probably shouldn't push it uh, yeah i was going to wonder I, uh, what, what were you doing in omaha because i think you even said you were in iowa right or something like that yeah yeah we're we're in iowa because right where so my son was playing in in omaha and uh just two miles north of that in des moines iowa i have uh my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law live here. 
So we, we came and made like a little uh, vacation out of the whole trip. So we're in Iowa um, trying to get away from that Florida heat. And the good news is it's only like 110 in Iowa today. So it's, it's worked out really well. Ugh. Could you ever see yourself moving to Iowa? I'm trying to think what Iowa was oh, like. Oh, yeah. Uh, if absolutely not. Really? Oh, okay. No. Thank okay. God. I thought he was going to say yes. No, oh, I have okay. all the corn I need in a can in my pantry back home. I don't <laughs> listen. Jimmy John's isn't that special to me. I can get it in Florida. No, I no. There's nothing. Yeah. You know, no. What do they What do they do in Iowa? Any idea besides? Uh... They have a state fair. Okay. Every, they every have week. livestock. <laughs> Mm. Interesting. Okay. okay. Uh, they have. Uh, Please don't talk about other yeah. people's wives like that, Bill. All right. <laughs> Calling well, I, them livestock is not very nice. It's, it's a, that's a big. That's a big. It, it, yeah. As long as they're in a fence, they're called livestock. <laughs> oh, they're fenced in. All right. Oh, so, Bill. Yeah. Oh, oh, brother, God. they're fenced in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a show, everybody. Thank All right. You. Glad you tuned Good in. Good night, everybody. Oh, my God. I hope you found it humorous. I can't anymore. Oh, look I, at that. Nice I line. had to. All just right. once. Okay, I'm done. I so really Bill, thought you would have waited a little longer. I, I, know. I know. But you, the door was open. I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. Bill, I think he's a little nervous around you. He's a little off his game tonight. He's a big guy. I'm not. I, I hear that I've had that effect on a lot of people. Over the really? Years. A little bit. A little, really? But we'll talk wow. about that later. Uh, yeah, um, get that. Okay. Sure. We lost two legendary referees, both uh, Tim White and Dave oh, Hebner. Man. Can you probably share with the fans uh, your relationship with both gentlemen and maybe some stories? Yeah, man. Such a – it's you know, it's always sad uh, when uh, – and I say this respect when, when one of the boys – but these men are legends. And, and you know, I coming from um, outside the – WWE, WWF at the time, coming outside of that company and being able to come in. I mean, those those were two of the men that you look forward to working with just as much as the, you know, as the on-air talent. And and I got to know the Hebners really well, the whole family. Uh, and nothing but respectful, funny as all get out, man. I mean, their humor was ridiculous, but they the love for the business and their knowledge they shared it they made you feel at home they treated you like you know they've been with you your whole career um and just, just timmy white i don't i don't even know what to say you know you see a lot of the uh, the guys and people that have interacted with them over the years you know sending their condolences and stuff to the family and, and just you know putting it out there to the wrestling universe uh, timmy white was he you could sit under his learning tree your whole career and never be able to use all the information he gave you. I mean, he was, he was one of those guys who didn't have to teach you. He didn't have to teach you anything. He could have just said, hello, be courteous, but he, he tried to teach you the rules of the road, the way of the WWE, um, take lessons from the legends, get in a car ride with these guys. I mean, all the things they pass down to people, and then you get to know them as people. So they're, they're already wrestling legends. But then if you could sit with them man-to-man -man and talk to them, you, you had to be in awe of that. So it was sad. And then, you know, last year we lost my, my good, 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 good buddy, Mickey J., uh, you know, to health issues too. And, it's you know, it's that thing of – as the elder statesmen continue to to you know move on and you know hopefully we see them down the road it's just sad uh but i i always try to look at the the upside of it and and remember the time that i was fortunate enough to have with all of those gentlemen and and a lot of the people that we you know that were slowly uh missing from the roster so it's uh i'm big I'm a big faith guy. I know a lot of people don't talk about that or want to hear that or or believe it, but I, I believe that they're 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 all in a better place and and they know they're loved and uh, I truly mean it when I tell everyone I'll see them down the road because I hope uh, you know I hope there's that that cribbage game and that card game going to happen when I get there too. So it's it's a it's a sad time, but I, I choose to honor the memories that I got to share with them and the things I learned from them. Well, Bill, this. This show, for sure, is you can certainly talk about your faith. Uh, it's wide open there. So 
and we're on the same page uh, from what I can tell. Fair enough, right, Mike? Absolutely. Um, as you speak of these referees, is the referee himself underappreciated in this business, and are the really good referees like, you know, the Hebners and the Tim Whites and the Nick Patrick from back in the NWO days, the special NWO referee, are these guys yeah. entertainers too? Are they entertainers too, and they just don't seem to get the credit because they're referees? <laughs> I think, and, and this is this is probably where I get myself in a little bit of hot water. But hopefully, I explain it the right way. I think, I think in my day, I think I'm allowed to say that I'm an old guy now. Uh, <laughs> we 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 came in and we were taught and and groomed that the referee was just as important as anything else. But they they were they. I think they always had the not the back seat, but they knew they weren't the focus and the greatest never made the focus about them. I think as the business is, has grown and, and kind of turned into what it is now, I think the referees are just as big a characters as, as, as some of the, you know, as some of the regular on air talent. And now with social media, geez, some of the, some of these young cats and referees have a bigger following than the boys. Mm. I, and that's not to say that the referees wow. were never part of the group or the locker room or anything, but on TV, I think that people had the perception, oh, the referees and the wrestlers are different, which they are. But now I think referees are just part of the part of the roster. So, right. Um, right. Uh, in, you know, I'm not sure if I answer there. I think there was a lot more respect for the referees because they held a position, and I think now. It's more of a character. Uh, this, is, this is the point where I get. So I think now people become referees who cannot become "quote unquote" body size wrestlers or have that ability, but still have entertaining, you know, quality. So I think right. it's uh, interesting. It's a good point. I, I, I personally miss the day of a referee being in charge and and you knowing who's who and well, I'm instead hit, of I'm being gonna, part I'm of gonna, the. I'm going to hit you with a hard in question. Ring. Because you're a little more yeah. old school like us, right? Trained by Johnny Rods. Yeah. Johnny Rods. Yeah. That, nice. And again, nice. I'm saying this respectfully, but how do you yeah. feel about women referees in professional wrestling? I I firmly believe, and I and I like the women's referees. the The issue I have with it is. They're they're supposed to be you know the policemen and thing. They're the they're the ones to keep everything in control. And, and you can't have a ninety five pound woman backing three hundred pound men into a corner and telling them to stop. It's just not it's not believable. There's nothing you're asking me. You know, and 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 again, people say, well, we've already told everybody it's entertainment. We've already told, but there's still that thing. I come to watch a show, and I find it hard that. That, yeah, I find it hard that women are controlling two two warriors that want to rip each other's heads off. You, you're going to try to put a woman in front of Moxley and and the cat from Japan. It's just not. It's not to me. It's not. It's not believable. I think there's a place for it. I think they, you know this is where you get in trouble. Women refereeing women's matches. That's a bonus. Uh, I think it's great, uh, but I, I just struggle with. You know, a, a woman telling uh, these monsters to to back it down or pushing them back into a corner, and, and you know the whoa 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 thing. So I'm for it. I just don't think it's it's it belongs in every match. Good point, Bill. Bill, so we're all getting older. I think we're actually older than you. Um, Come on, nah, dude. Trust I think me. we got we're, you. We're bro. old. We're, I think we're I older think we than dirt. You. Yeah. But all right, I'm calling it right now. I'm I'm going to be 57 in November. All right, so we're right there. Got us him. by two years. Right we, next we, to you, we, we, winner, <laughs> winner. But you look better than us. That's the problem. Yeah, and I'm not getting it's a anything smaller, for Christmas. It's a smaller screen. <laughs> is, this, is that what? Is that how you do that? Uh, get us yeah, a you smaller only go, screen, Spidey. Yeah. So we all have our regular families, but in the wrestling world, like we were we, we were talking about Tim White before that Andre yes. the Giant documentary. I could watch yeah. that all the time, and his his love for Andre makes me cry every time. Oh. But, but my point to you is you have this other family, and yeah. we all know that wrestlers have passed at a very early age, and you've become very close to them. How are you able yeah. to deal with that? 
it's it's hard man it's uh i i know a lot of times i think people are um you know to me it's it's like people watch the news and you become numb to hearing about all the tragedies on the news but for me it's different when you when you learn about you know people you've shared the road with whether you whether you broke bread with them or not if you've worked with them or been in the locker room with them or traveled with them in some way shape or form it has to uh well for me it, it gets to me every time and <clears throat> and i'm fortunate enough where my wife knows that and when something happens and we hear about someone in in in, in the business who's passed away for whatever reason may be um I, I just take some time uh, by myself again, and I say this: I choose to remember those those ha ha moments that I got to share with that person or or people, and then and then it's just you know for a minute you just thank God that you you're still here on the other side of that memory, and uh, I don't think it ever gets easier. I think it's a it's a tragedy, and and for 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 fans for casual fans and people who have never been involved in something like this it it doesn't go away i still have uh crazy crazy flashbacks about uh crash holly and, <clears throat> and i'm getting choked up again you know crash holly and and cheese lou rock a rock and johnny grunge and 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 just all my guys that that i miss and for so many different reasons i don't think it ever changes but you know going back like you said with timmy white he's talking about andre and so you know he called andre boss but everybody called timmy boss because of that mm. um you you feel people's passion you, i mean we learn about each other's families they're the only people we get to vent to when you're away from your wife and kids all you had and back in the day there was no facetime there was no internet and all these other things so you, you know the public phone or the hotel phone a landline and things like that and but i i choose to remember it it's the hard i think it's the hardest thing in the world i'm sure it's the same for you know for nfl guys or major league baseball or, or you you know the the nba and things like that um this but this wrestling community i think always will be and and, and continues to be a tight-knit community so when there is loss i think we all feel it in different ways but boy i really fight to find those 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 good times and then for the for the ones that unfortunately i've never spent time with or or got to know you just you just sit back and and look at their body of work and appreciate them for who they are and and you send strength and prayers to their families but we it's that, that you know the, um, that unfortunate phrase of the show goes on and the business stops for no one so it's it's uh at times it feels like a little robotic but uh the human side of it is i don't i don't think those those things go away too fast and it's the same with hebner and timmy white and you know as time goes on there's triggers right there's triggers that make you remember things or remind you of something and and so uh, uh unfortunately it's it it I'm not a it is what it is kind of guy because I don't believe in that but it's a part of you know life and and the circle and I'm continued to look at the the positive aspect of of that. Bill, recent that's a crazy long answer, isn't it? No, that was that's a great answer, man. That's a great, that's answer. A great answer. Usually we don't shut up. You shut us up. That was a great answer. That was the, oh, jeez, <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that was that, thanks. You know, <laughs> sorry, you know I just figured I'd you know state the obvious. Um. Bill, allegations against Vince McMahon. I'm trying to be serious. Yeah. Can you let me be I'm serious? sorry. Are you okay? Go ahead. You, I now. apologize. Okay. Sorry, Bill. Uh, recent allegations against Vince McMahon have obviously cast a shadow over his future with the company. Um, <clears throat> any thoughts? Um, as you could probably imagine, I'm not a fan of ac allegations or accusations. Sure. Uh, I I deal in facts. Uh, I try to anyway. Um, when I learned the news, I went, "Wow!" Uh, I, I, you know, so I question because you watch on this crazy social media world we're in. I think a lot of people get a free uh, dart to throw at Vince because of the Mister McMahon character. Um, 
I think that's where a lot of the hoopla comes from. Uh, you know, with Wall Street reporting these things and the news picking up all over the world, it's a real thing. But I think a lot of people just chime in because they get to say something. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I'll say this: if there's something that happened that was you know legally breaking the law or misconduct, then you know the 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 chips are going to fall where they may, and that's that's you know that's something for Vincent Kenny McMahon, the person, to deal with. As far as the WWE. I don't think there's anything big enough to stop World Wrestling Entertainment as a company and as a, you know, what they do, you know, on a daily, weekly basis as a company and performers. I think it'll shake things up a little bit if something formally comes out. But I, I choose to really, and, and I think I'm gun shy from it by now, I choose to, when I hear the words allegations and stuff like that, I, I offer no no opinion whether it's personal or professional until everything comes out because uh it, it, you know as we know we're not we're not hiding things here i have been on the end of allegations and accusations and just mm -hmm. like i did then i didn't comment on things that weren't factual so i'm i choose to you know kind of just sit back uh and and see what happens i you know and, and as always i wish everybody well to to be honest it has no effect on my day-to-day -day life currently so I choose not to uh, get too too wrapped up in it, and and then I also choose not to get involved in, you know, Twitter and and all those things where people say, "Hey, tell me about that." There's really nothing for me to tell because I'm not there. I'm not part of it. I'm not a. Uh, I'm no longer a shareholder or anything. So I, I, there's no trickle down effect for me. I just hope that whatever happens gets cleared up and that wrestling fans enjoy what they pay for it and not not get involved in the other things you know but 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 don't you think as a country we have this habit as the people to tear down the uh yeah. success stories in hopes to build them up because with mr mcmahon we've got two different issues here we've got the moral side of it against right. the legality side right and i feel like as as people of this country we never seem to separate the two, right? Because right. morals is different from legality. So whether you exactly. slept with that woman and gave her hush money, that is a moral issue. That's a moral issue, exactly. Yep. So why and do you it, think this country has become this way, or do you think it's always been this way? I I think we've 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 opened the door to give people more opportunity. Like once the and this is where you go down the rabbit hole, right? There's a freedom of speech, and I can say anything I want, and here's my opinion. And once we have more formats to do that with no repercussions, there you go. I think people, you know, it goes back to the keyboard cowboys and people who hide behind an avatar. Yep. Um, yep. And that to me is the downfall of for, forget the wrestling industry, forget oh. football, forget basketball, forget all these other, forget politics this is what's happening and you said it in america in this country in the world everybody gets to have an opinion which is fine and voice it but the court of public opinion is taking over the courts Pe you know you're you're done livelihoods are changed uh careers are changed all these things are changed and i say that now openly because right now i'm in a conversation with the speaker of the house of the united states you know, about her husband's legal problems. If they were moral problems, I have nothing to say about that because I'm sure, li listen, I don't stand on a soapbox and I, don't, and I don't live in a glass house, thank goodness, because morally, I am I know that I've done things that might be incorrect and I'm not judge I'm not here to judge people. But I think everybody feels like, ah, it's, I can say what I want, and I'm not really hurting anybody. And, and if I am, who cares? They don't know who I am. You know? Bill, any thoughts uh, on I think you said that the, uh, it was the public opinion. Is it the public opinion or just the loudest opinion on the Internet nowadays? Well, I, I think we have to say the public because we can't narrow it down to one group, one person, mm -hmm. one thing. So it's, the, it's, the, it's the, the court of public opinion is super, super strong because... And listen, and if we're talking about the WWE, you're a publicly traded company. You got Snickers, you got this one, you got that one. You got Fox and Peacock and these millions of billions of dollars, and they can't have their brand 
tarnished. Just like NXT can't be tarnished or AEW can't be tarnished or IBM or Walmart or Apple or, or you know, movie movie companies can't be tarnished. So there's always, there's always the court of public opinion that's going to help sway mm. how people think, feel, and support or or not support the the situation what was your personal relationship with vincent kennedy mcmahon if we can ask uh i'll i'll say i'll I'll try to answer this one short from day one of joining wwf at the time can i say that here wwf say whatever you want sure um i know it's not politically correct you can't say it because the panda bears will come and get me or something but (laughs) Hey, be careful. I Last think... week we announced that what kind of sloth bear ate two people in yeah. India. Yeah, sloth So you got to be careful of those panda bears. Watch those. I always wanted a sloth. We got to talk about this later. Uh, yeah. I want a sloth. Um, I know when this yeah, on the I, run I, in India. He's always. I'd love this. Anybody who gets caught by a sloth. I don't know. I want to say you almost deserve to get a beat. I, that's what I said uh, last week, but I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Uh, I'm with you on that one. I get some heat for that. And then, so when I joined the company, from from the minute go, I'm a big fan of people looking you in the eye, shake your hand, and let you know they're in the room. And I've had some really good conversations with Vince. I've had some crazy, you know, creative conversations with Vince. But he's always been very cool. Really? Okay. Um, okay. The thing that stands out for me with Vince McMahon, and this is this is my respect for him after wrestling is when when my daughter was killed in 2015 vince was one of the first people to pick up the phone and speak to me okay and that speaks volumes this isn't wrestling this isn't you know a gimmick this wasn't so he could say hey guess who i called during his tragedy this was this was this was a man vince calling a man bill and you know sharing a moment and some thoughts and just heartfelt conversation and I've never had anything less than that from Vince. I knew when it was business, and I knew when you know you could have a couple of laughs with him. He was always available to you, or at least you know in in the, in the uh, the times that I was with him, and 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 later on when I worked behind the scenes as a producer and an agent, always always you know business. Let's go get him. And then if there were, you know if there's times to sit around and laugh or or throw a shot at each other or something, it was always. I always had a good relationship with Vince. I, there was never anything like I have nothing. I wish I could. He yeah, he tripped me in the hall one time. That sucker, and I got mad. No, <laughs> nothing, man. Um, I've seen him at his best. I've seen him when he's mad. I've seen him when he's late. I see him when he's got a lot on his mind. And I, but I've never seen him not take the time for a conversation or explain his his thinking. But the the thing that stays with me when I hear his name is how he respected my family and picked up that phone. That's good to hear. So being that we're old school, recently Sasha Banks and Naomi walked out of Raw because they were unhappy with the story. What are your thoughts and what are your feelings about that in in the state that the, uh, the character or the athlete can just decide they're gonna walk out on their contract? That that part, and again, so right, all we have is so far, I think, as far as I'm, if I'm caught up on it, we just have the side of that they walked out, they dropped the belts on, on Ace's desk or whatever it was, and they left. I don't think we've heard from Sasha and Naomi since, for whatever reason. Um, I tend to think, like a lot of people, it's still a work, but I don't think it is. Um, I know both of those young ladies very well. Utmost respect for them. Old school, I don't get it. It, it. Nothing justifies walking out, especially this day and age when when the younger talent that's coming in now and they're still young talent have been given the world. They're, let's talk about their payday. If we're talking old school, let's talk about their paydays. Let's talk about the their travel and what, what they're doing and what's afforded to them. That you just or I don't like what's going on. And I'm going to leave. I I I can't I can't wrap my head around that. I mean, how many times have I, I've been in a room, and when I say room, a locker room full of forty guys who were pissed off and didn't like what was going on, and 
but you did your job. And I think that's the that's the easy part now is that even if they love the business, they know there's other things they can be doing. So how much do you really love it? And and when when do we start thinking about the people that have invested all their time in the years they've been there? When do we start thinking about forget the people behind the scenes when do you start thinking about your fans and while people going yeah good for you you stuck up for yourself and if you don't like it walk out and all this other stuff if i'm the owner of another company or someone in the industry how do i know that's not going to happen to me next if they get upset so again list you know just hearing what's been going on so far i i, I can't even say good for them for sticking up for themselves because i'm not sure what what the issue is if it's creative then I, I don't know. I, I just think there's a better way than just going, I'm going to take my ball and go home. Well, did you work with either one of those young ladies at all? And, yeah. And if yeah, yeah. Did, I was there from... Day one? I was there from day one with Sasha. I figured So that. did you see something that. in Sasha? Because yeah. this is not the first time that this type of occurrence has happened. And again, I know nothing. Or I only know what I read. Right. But did you see that type of temperament from Sasha when you were training, or, or do you think this is just her attitudes changing? Um, I don't time? think it's like I think when people hear temperament, they think it's an angry thing. I think there's that. Is it her ego? I definitely, I definitely saw as time went on, and not, not specifically with Sasha. I think with the whole group, I think I saw that entitlement. Because they were always reminded of how important they are, and it is about them as well as they should be. But I think it was taken a step further, and like, okay, I do hold all the straws. I am, and without me, the show doesn't go on. I think that's the mentality. A lot of I'm going to do damage to this company if I leave, and they better know it. Un unfortunately, the WWE rolls on each and every week, and nothing changes but i i do see the attitude change and i think it starts from the onset uh, i think if you're if you're being told that you're you know people have the ability to speak up and all those things and there's no chain of command and talk to whoever you want and you know some people go over everybody's head and some people go around people and and that's the nature of any business. But I think as it, as it comes to these younger cats in this business, I think the entitlement thing is way, way, way misinterpreted. And they think that someone's going to fold. And I think, you can only, I think you can only use that card so many times before people call your bluff and go, well, then go do your thing. But if, if, if the, the story stays true, they're both under contract and can't work anywhere else. And they're not getting paid. And now they're getting hit in the pocketbook with no merchandise and everything else. So as good as you are and as much as you're loved in the in the wrestling universe, sooner or later you, you've got to decide what you're going to do. And as, as anybody else, you know, if they strike while the iron's hot and their names are still hot, that's good. But what happens if it goes on for a while and now there's other people who have come up from behind you that are just as good or or more loyal if that's the word you want to use but i'm i'm not a fan of walking out i think if you have a conversation you don't come to terms that's you know the, that's always the announcement we came to terms with sasha and naomi and you know whether their future endeavored or we wish them luck and what they're going to do or hey the door's open for you to come back that's totally different than what's going on now because now it just makes them seem like they both had a temper tantrum uh left and while people are like yeah good for you screw them blah, blah, blah. Now they got to be thinking. Well, the the air is kind of out of the balloon, and no one's really talking about us anymore. And what have we done? You know. So, so. here's a two part question for you. Then, um, I'm assuming then you agree because today's fans are always like there's no true stars. So I'm assuming you agree with the WWE saying we're going to be the star because we can't afford this type of thing to happen. And then my next question is. Would you blame Steve Austin for opening this door that now wrestlers feel they can walk out because he was probably the first guy to really do this, right? Yeah, but I I feel like people are using the Steve walkout as a justification because I'm uh, and I can't speak for Steve, but I'm pretty sure Steve didn't go. I'll set the tone for everybody else coming in the future. No. 
But I'm sure there's a lot more conversations that went on before Steve decided to do what he did. Um, but just like everything else, people start comparing it and go, it's good enough for Steve Austin. And look who he is and what he's become. Then, geez, if I do the same thing, it's got to work out the same way. Uh, so I don't, I don't blame Steve in that. I think he's just grouped into, okay, he set the, he set the tone and everybody's following his lead. Um, I would next. say if everybody went through what he was going through at the time or, or his situation, then maybe they could justify it. But uh, right. I think everybody's backed the, the WWE into a corner and going, listen, like you said, we're the star. You guys are the, are the, are the players, you know. Um, so I don't think they're going to let anybody get that big anymore where they can literally shut the product down or, or make such a, uh, an impact on the industry. Um, it was great news for a, a bunch of weeks, and I really don't hear too much about it anymore. But I don't think there's a comparison. And I think, you know, no disrespect to anybody, but you can't compare Sasha Naomi to Steve Steve Austin anyway. So I completely agree. On top of it, when Steve walked out, it he didn't come back for 20 years. It's not like he jumped to the competition. It took him 20 years before yeah. he got back in the race. His loyalty was clearly still with Vince McMahon, obviously. He was just... Pissed. Yeah, and, I, and I'm... Pr and I wasn't there, but I'm pretty sure it was a face-to-face -face conversation, whether it was a bunch of cussing each other out or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, screw you. Or it was a face-to-face. -face. It wasn't like, here's my... Here's, here's your strap, and I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm... From what I understand, he made it pretty clear what what was going to happen. Bill, I gotta I gotta um, throw this in while I have you here. Uh, some fans' perception, and it's mine too, so I'm just saying it out front. Yeah. When I see AEW grabbing one WWE cast off after another, I can't help it. It feels like the latter days of WCW. Am I wrong to to get this vibe? No, I, I don't think you're wrong to to feel it. And, and again, I've I, you know, like you said, I've heard it from people and from someone who was there during that. I'm watching it and thinking the same thing. Like, hey, this, like, history is repeating itself, you know. Hmm. But then at the same point, you look at it business wise, and he's got a plethora of talent, but nowhere to go with them, you know. Far and few live events in between. <clears throat> it's not like they're going 300 days a year. Mm -hmm. You can run East Coast, West Coast, uh, and then you know the 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 the. The payroll's got to be a little ridiculous right now. Um, sure. How it works out in their favor right now is there's so many injuries that they got bodies to fill in, you know. Um, and then you also got to wonder the guys and the girls who have requested out or made the jump and doing things like that, and they're not working as much and not getting in front of the public eye and doing the things they thought they could do. You got to wonder how they feel about it. But I, I think there's a little bit of history repeating themselves there. And if, and if that's the case, if you look forward past that, you know, you might have the same outcome. But uh, I, think, I think it's – I'm a big fan of everybody working, but I find it odd that you, that you keep taking – talent or not, you keep taking, you know, you're not – there's no momentum there after a while because now it's, there's no shock factor on who's going to show up at AEW in my opinion. Right, and who's their so, Goldberg? Who's their homegrown legend that we'll talk about decades and decades? And yeah, decades? yeah, and you have those guys, but they're being overshadowed by more notable notoriety. You know, people that have made a name for themselves in the business, and I think it 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 sucks on the other end too, because no matter what AEW does, they're going to be the company that's stealing talent or just hiring talent to boost their own company. So I think it's a double edged sword, right? It's like don't don't repeat history, but at the same time, no matter what they do, they're going to be compared that way. Right. Do you think that also the problem is that the owner is a fan and he's a booker, where Vince is more of a businessman, and this is part of the problem with AEW? Yeah, I, uh, I almost feel like I, I had an opportunity to meet Tony Khan years ago when, when we first opened a PC and he came down. Good, good guy. Uh, I know he's a fan of the business. But it's always that thing of, like in, in wrestling, right? You always say, well, if I ever become the booker, I don't want to be the talent. Um, the, the justification is the Mr. McMahon character. But I know Tony's very vocal. I know Tony makes appearances. And he's the creative guy. He's the boss. He's the, you know, all these things. And, and after a while, 
that might get old or people might start questioning it. But um, you, you have to stop being a fan, I think, and being a businessman. But that, that, that's just my opinion, you know. Mm-hmm. All right, so I couldn't help think about you uh, last Sunday was Father's Day, and I could imagine that was a very difficult day for you. Um, on October 10th, 2015, you lost yeah. your daughter to a drunk driver. Yeah. Recently, Paul Pelosi, um, husband, and again, I don't know if you're a fan of hers or not. I call her the devil, husband <laughs> of the devil. Um, Tammy Stitch, otherwise known as Sonny. And yeah. now more recently, Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Um, can you share with us and the fans your thoughts on the uh, these situations and maybe these people feeling they're bigger than everybody else and they feel they can do whatever they want and and put everybody's lives in danger you know uh, a, a lot of first of all thank you for for thinking of me on father's day i appreciate that um there's a i think there's a lot of people when they see me now on social media they they're not looking at they're looking at the bill demott they saw on tv they're looking at the bill demott who was formerly Hugh Morris or formerly General Rection or formerly from Tough Enough and all these formerly things. And and who I am is, the, the funny part is, I'm still the same Bill DeMott, but I have a different agenda or speaking platform because I was affected. Uh, my 20-year-old daughter was, was killed in a head-on collision by a multiple DUI offender. I stopped everything I did from that day on. There's no more acting. There's no more. I, I still try to, my wife make me do, do a wrestling appearance out there because I love the business. But I'm vocal now. And, and so it's clear to everyone. The wrestling universe sometimes eats me up still. Well, why are you picking on Jeff Hardy or why are you picking on Sonny? Sonny is a nine-time offender who took a person's life. I'm talking about Tamara Sitch. I'm not talking professional wrestling. This isn't personal. This is, this is, I take it back. It is personal. You have to be held accountable. I'm not going after Jeff Hardy, one of the greatest professional wrestlers in the history of this industry. I'm talking about Jeff Hardy, the man who continues to make decisions to get behind a wheel, intoxicated, and he's going to kill himself or someone else. I'm not going after Speaker Nancy Pelosi because of political reasons. Frankly, I don't care what she does. But as an elected political official, your husband was arrested for DUI, and they're trying to hide the fact. Same as the actor from Anchorman, that David Kochner. Same as the guy who nobody knows in Central Florida who's had six DUIs and killed people. The guy who killed my daughter was a multiple DUI offender who wasn't held accountable until he killed someone. Now, there's two things I know in this world. I can be physical as anybody else, and I have to protect my kids. I was good at what I did. I entertained the world in some way, shape, or form. I made you mad. I made you laugh. I entertained you. I made you go, wow, holy cow, or, ah, that sucks. But this, this is life. And in this life, people are losing their lives because of decisions. Am I standing up and saying, I have never been in that situation? No. And every time I speak in this country, I say, I'm not casting stones at anyone. But if you want to go back, This, this is what I go to. I go to facts. You got arrested for a DUI. And in this country, we have a repeat offender mentality. It's just, you're a good guy. It's an accident. He didn't mean it. Oh, he's got a problem. Oh, she, you know, she's got a disease. And all the, but why, are we, why do we have to suffer because of someone's decision? Because, because they have this to fall back on. They keep making those decisions and losing lives. So I want to speak to Nancy Pelosi and go, you're a parent, and what if it was your daughter killed? What would be your stance then? I don't want to see Jeff Hardy, the the, the professional wrestler, in jail for the rest of his life. I also don't want to see Jeff Hardy kill someone or himself because of drunk driving. And so people have to be held accountable, me included. 
And I stand by everything I say, everything on social media, everywhere I go. And because of that decision made almost seven years ago, I've, I've spoken to over 100,000 students. I work with law enforcement agencies nationwide. I'm on two different boards. Our foundation is growing and not growing in a good way. I don't want to do this, man. I wanted to entertain people. I wanted to make them laugh, make them mad. I wanted to do goofy. I, I, you know, I dressed in spandex for a reason. And now here I am in the legislature in Tallahassee and getting ready for the U.S. government trying to pass bills and talk to kids and educate people because you and me, we're not going to change this. We're too old. But we've got to smarten up this, this younger generation. And in the process, if you get caught, then I'm going to be there to put you on front street. And I'm going to be holding people accountable. When I say holding people accountable, I'm mainly trying to hold the lawyers and the judges and the people making the arrests accountable more than the offenders because we just keep slapping them on the wrist. So my outcome doesn't change. It'd be very easy for Bill DeMott and the DeMott family to sit in a corner in the dark and, and try to navigate our journey because I have a 28-year-old daughter whose life has been changed forever. I have a 13-year-old son who's trying to understand what life is without a sister. I have to look my wife in the eye every night. And I have to wake up and try to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Because I had, I had a, a career path. I made my decisions for my family what we wanted to do. I had a future planned. And sometimes I think we all forget that in wrestling and in business and everything else. And sometimes you just have to stop everything else and, and take care of yours. I'm serving a life sentence. No matter what I do or say, it doesn't affect my family one way or the other. We're not coming out of this. And this isn't a family business. My daughter's foundation isn't a family business. It's run by volunteers. I make zero money every day because it's not about money. It's not about notoriety. I've always said I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I've been a coach more than half my life, and I'm a father. And how dare I not do what I raise my kids to do and how I raise them to think. So this is my journey. So if you're a wrestler, I'm going to be the guy calling you out. And people go, oh, he's just, he's just sour because, I mean, Sonny literally got on Twitter and said, you're pissed off because you're not in the Hall of Fame. You got nothing to say. Really? That's your, that's your comment after killing someone? Killing someone and hurting three other people after nine DUIs? That's your comment? This isn't about wrestling, and that's the problem. Everybody thinks it's a work, and it's about wrestling, and this is what matters, and it's not. It's fun. It's a great job. It's a great career. Hopefully, it gets, makes everybody money, and they move on to bigger and better things, or they stay in the business for 30 years and, and become a, a producer, an agent, a coach, work in kit, camera, production, all these things, become a trainer, open a, 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 a complex, and work with the best minds in the industry. That's a career, but it's not the do-all, end-all. And people have to stop, especially in this wrestling industry, have to stop treating everything. It just affects wrestling. It doesn't. There's livelihoods at stake. And it goes back to Naomi and Sasha. If they have other things in mind they need to do, then come out and let the world know what you're doing. And stop letting them make it about wrestling. Same thing with Vince. If this is a moral thing and a personal thing, come out and say it, let's say it, and move on and leave the wrestling out of it. But court of public opinion and people get to say and do what they want so we're all stuck in this this cornucopia of of, of nonsense um but i'm very vocal about it i know that's a long answer but i'm very vocal about what what i'm doing and what the foundation does and i'm very proud of what my daughter's message is and the lives that she saved to this point so we will be you know we continue to uh pressure speaker pelosi to meet with me in person and I'll, I'll go to, to D.C. to do it. And we'll continue to let people know that whether you're an athlete or professional athlete or celebrity or, or, or an everyday guy, you're going to be held accountable. With that, Bill, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with this legend, Mr. Bill DeMott. Cool. Oh, I think I froze. Tired of that same old, same old breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Same old tasting scrambled eggs, burger, that dinner steak, ribs, or pork chops. Why not add a little bit of spice? 
title that. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. Elm Logistics, for all your logistic needs, call 631-299-3595. That's 631-299-3595. Elm Global Logistics, pride, performance, and partnerships. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, where we are honored to have this wrestling legend, Bill DeMott. Bill, first of all, thank you for that last comment. Um, <clears throat> very well spoken, sir, and uh, thank you. respect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, Bill, uh, let's get back to that magic word, alleged, which we... We love so much. In uh, twenty, I know. In twenty fifteen, uh, several former trainees uh, took to social media, like half the world does, uh, to tell stories about your alleged there's the word uh, misconduct. Um, the WWE investigation found a zero zero wrongdoing on your part, um, but you decided to resign. Why did you resign? And uh, share your thoughts on what you were going through during the allegations, please, if you can. So the, here's the interesting part about this conversation we're having right now. Up mm -hmm. until now, I don't think I've ever addressed this Okay. Uh, by choice. So I'm going to say this. I, I feel like, and it goes back to what I said earlier when we were talking about uh, Vince's situation. I'm not a big fan of allegations and accusations. Mm -hmm. And... And I was no stranger to them prior to becoming the head of, you know, the performance center and doing all those things. Um, I find, I find, I continue to find it interesting that people who uh, don't make it, let's particularly in the WWE, okay. wait till they lose their opportunity, their job or something to voice that kind of opinion. Hmm. Um, if it's something that serious and offensive, then why wasn't it addressed when you're told that you have open forum to speak to anybody at any time? Um, I will say the Performance Center has cameras in every room, corner, uh, square foot of the building. So everything is seen 24 hours a day. Um, and to be honest, instead of addressing all that, the reason I resigned is this. Just like Triple H and so many others that helped take the NXT brand from F FCW in the Tampa area and to to build it into what it what it became and kind of what it still is. I put a lot of time, effort, sweat, emotion into helping build that brand and that performance center and worked with those men and women on what they did and what they tried to do. And I thought it was the best thing to not tarnish what was about to happen. Because if you look back at that time in 2015, we were just branching outside of Florida. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so things were really starting to grow. Yep, NXT was taken And I knew what was coming down months in advance because i was i was a wwe employee i was the head of the pc so paul and i talked every day and i knew the 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 numbers and where we we're going to go and what we were going to do and how we were going to get there and i take great pride in that and so when all of this came up and and to your fact publicly stated zero justification for anything that was said, done, written, or posted. And it wasn't the first time it happened, and every time it was investigated. When I say investigated, human resources, the whole thing. But what was happening was the court of public opinion and the social media, and because NXT was starting to branch out and become this world brand, there was starting to make there could be this this mark on it. So I I just took the high road. 
There's no other explanation. I called my wife from, from Ohio, and I said, I'm going to get on a plane, and I'm coming home. She said, everything okay? I said, I'm done. Mm. Because we, we all didn't work that hard to have it just thrown around to go through what? Months of goofiness like they're going through now? Fast forward seven years later, whatever it is. Um, I just didn't, why do you work so hard to build something up to let people tear it down? So, J.J. Dillon told me something a long time ago in WCW when I first got there. He said he's the guy with the, the bullseye on his back because people think he makes all the decisions. And when I became a trainer after Tough Enough and Deep South and all these other things, it became the, you know, the, the Bill DeMont dartboard. And for people to honestly think that I was the one in control of all decisions on who made it, who didn't make it, who had a job, who didn't have a job, who's getting a push, who's not worth it, who's doing this. I mean, you got to be, I appreciate the, uh, the accolades, but you got to be out of your mind. Um, so, like I said, I, I, you know, I always say in, in my close personal circle, someone had to, you know, someone had to lay on the sword. So I laid on the sword. Mm. Um, were, but, you con were you confused when somebody like Hannibal was uh, coming forth and saying, I mean, how do you feel about him when he tries to interview? I mean, how does that get worked out? Well, he, he, he that, but that's his gig, right? He's one of these guys right. we're talking about. Like, that's his gig. Right. He, you know, he was one of those guys who, I get, you know, he was trying out to be a wrestler and all these things. And if it doesn't work, well, then let me tear the business apart. Okay. Get, get all the views you want. Get all the likes you want. Get all gotcha. the follows you want. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and, and if that's your job, you know, do your job, man, and be, be proud of what you're doing. But I don't have to put my head on his pillow at night. And I don't have to put my head on some of the, some of the other people's pillows. And the fact that how many years later, one of those talents came out on one of the sites and said, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done it, but I was protecting myself over everything else. Mm. Well, the damage is already done. So it doesn't matter what kind of apology you put out there. Right, right. And to be honest, I could have been very bitter and very could've. crap. I feel like I could have blown this whole industry up if I wanted to at the time. Could have. Because at the time, and even still now, there's nobody who knew more about what was going on than me. <clears throat> Mm. Emails, text messages, conversations, uh, re program reports, uh, talent reports, and, you know, all these things. I could have really done some damage and went into business for myself. But that's not who I am. That's not the business I got into. It's not how I was brought into the business. And so, respectfully, I, I didn't want to, you know, I, I didn't want to offend Paul. I didn't want to put him in a position that he shouldn't be put in. And we all work too hard to build a brand. And so, so you enjoy working with Paul? How was Triple H? Oh, man. I, I, I never got to work with him in the ring. Um, but I got to know him, you know. And, and when I talk about serious conversations, we're, you know, life and business and, and things like that. But his vision, his vision became <clears throat> my vision. He inspired me every day to be better. He inspired me to... To protect his vision, I felt like his his personal bodyguard. When, when so many people saw it going, they were, oh, let's do this, let's do this, and I would always be the voice of. I hear Paul, and I knew his vision, and okay, let's stay the course. But I enjoyed working with him. I enjoyed getting to know him as a man and a father, and and on a personal level and professionally. I think the guy's a, a, a genius, and he's got a. Uh, Tremendous insight. We both came from the Northeast. We both came from the same kind of trainers in, this, in the same time. And I looked at my career and go, wow, I feel pretty pretty secure in what I did. And I look at what he's done. And this is a guy with a passion and a belief. And, and he trusts certain people. And I felt like he trusted me. And I had to do my job. And at the same time, when it came time to protect the brand and the company and, and Paul, I, I feel like I did what I had to do. Well, Kudos to you, Bill, and oh yeah, and, and and again, thank you. But I don't say that to go. Oh, he's a great no. I but no, I, but I, I firmly admit I'm an asshole at times. No, but you clearly came across. You knew what you had to do. What you thought was best for the yeah. company and McMahon. But so here you have this friendship with with. Uh, I'm going to call him Triple H because I don't know him yeah. at all. 
and he knows what you did. The allegations are proven not to be true, but right. he understands what you're doing. Can you share with the people what your conversation was when you decide to part ways? What does Triple H say to you? He tried to talk you out of it. We 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 just looked at each other because you know you have to come you have to come face to face with your boss. And uh, to to be quite honest, uh, I told Paul when I came back in 2011 when he first called me to come back after the last tough enough with uh, Stone Cold. And I told him when I came back, regardless of what has happened in the past, I'll never do anything to embarrass you. That's my promise. And that was the conversation when I left Ohio that day after our first live event outside of Florida. I, I promised I'd never do anything to embarrass you. So I appreciate you, man. And that was kind of it. Wow. Well, Bill. Wow. We're almost out of time. We're going to do something called the Pharaoh's final question. This is an unscripted okay. question. There goes the script. Cool. Jimmy, Jimmy may ask you if you like oh, Twinkies or Yodels here we go. or who knows, Ooh. but we're going to have at it. The Pharaoh's final question. Susie Q's? Yeah. Susie Q's. You, like, you Q's. like Susie Q's? No, that's not my question. No. Gross. Yeah, I don't like them either. I just figured I'd throw it You're in. Not even, you shouldn't even be allowed to say Susie Q's. Yeah, probably yeah, exactly. not. Yeah. Those were always the ones that had the full like ten boxes. What on are the they shelf. made of, Susie Cruz? Is that what's it with the peanut butter? Or is that peanut? No, fingers? it's some sort of cakey, airy no. thing with no. <laughs> cakey, airy. It's that airy. It's, like it's, the, it's, right, it's airy, right, Bill? It's like this airy no, thing. Oh, airy. Even, see, you can't. You guys are from. Uh, we're all from the same place. You can't say airy, creamy, cakey. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was doing it to disparage it. I thought I was doing a good job. I don't know. It upset me. Yeah, it's upsetting me. I'm not even hungry. <laughs> anyway, this is horrible. All right, here we go. Here comes the Pharaoh's question. Boy, I've been waiting okay. for this too. General Rection. Here comes the question. Okay. Vince Russo, genius or nimcompoop? Oh, it's a... Uh... Drum roll? Depends on what day it is. Oh my God! Really? Not overall? I I couldn't get one or the other. I mean, overall, it, I think he, uh, genius. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So more good ideas than bad at the end of the day to the public who. Probably How can you thinks, blame a guy who comes up with the misfits in action? Genius. Well, that was that's that's fine, but genius. But major guns and general erection and GI major guns was GI good. bro. GI bro was okay. Oh, come on. Wait a minute, Lieutenant Stash. <laughs> that's kind of cool. <laughs> that's Talk about that. stories. Oh, oh my lord. All right, so more genius than them. Bill, okay. want to thank you for joining us. Um, this has been an honor to have thank you on the show. Thank you. Uh, wonderful human being and thank you man thank you thank you so much I, i've always been you. a huge fan and oh, thank uh, you. you you didn't disappoint jimmy thank any you, final man. words to our guest here just thanks for your career and well, uh thanks for training th so many thank guys. thank thanks everyone for else for my career thanks for training so many people that probably half of us don't even oh. realize you had a hand in their their growth i mean there's a lot of cats. I appreciate off, that. You could probably rattle off quite the list, and it would probably really hammer home all the things you've done. So thank you for everything. Yeah. Well, keep, guys, I just thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for just a, a cool conversation. Um, I look forward to doing it again, and I just appreciate you guys and what you're doing. And uh, just be safe, and God bless. Thanks, guys. God bless. All right, Bill, thank you. God bless. Thank you, brother. The great Bill DeMott, man. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Always a fan of that gentleman. I feel like we just Always. talked to a great American. Is it just me? Not just, yeah, not just a great. There we go. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Well, I, that's well what I said, like. Farrell. Yeah, yeah, he struck me the way we walked so, away from some of the other great So real guys. quick, what did you take away from the interview? I took and by away. the way, real quick, I want to thank everybody for joining us. I didn't get to call your names out. But we are humbled and blessed to have you with us every Thursday. We're humbled and blessed to have such a great producer like Spidey. Spidey. And certainly humbled and uh, thankful for a guest like Bill DeMont. And before you comment on the interview, I just mm -hmm. want to say one thing. Sure. I was always a Bill DeMont guy. Um, never really talked about him much, but always had this utmost respect and more respect for him as I got to learn about him as a trainer. 
but even the most respect as I got to learn about him as a human being. So I will tell you, we talk about we talk about today. guests that come in here. Yeah. Um, He's up I there. was actually He's up there. nervous today. Really? Yes. Really? Because I know what this guy has gone through. Yeah. Allegations. Yes. He lost a daughter. Yes. The carry on. Did you hear what he said? He, takes he has to look at his wife every night. Yeah. And look at his other children. No, I know. And that is lingering on him I, I for the know. rest of his life. I know. Do you understand what a powerful... I don't know, but I know. No, right. I understand. But you know what I mean. What a powerful human being this is. But anyway, I thoughts just, on the interview. I just love the fact that he follows his heart. That's what I got from him. Because when he felt like he had even in the slightest, would possibly bring bad vibes to the, the company and stuff. He was like, no, we're not having this circus. We're, we're all, we don't need this dirt. I think that that's amazing. He put the company before himself. Then when it comes to his daughter, One thing? he puts well, hold on. everything One thing, to back, the side. Back to that before, I'm you, amazed before you speak about the daughter, what a great give kudos to his wife. Absolutely. Understand the phone call. Right. Honey, I'm, got I'm these allegations. No, right. Well, no, he, didn't have, he could afford it. Right. I have these allegations. My, my heart is telling me right. I need to step away. The wife, okay, I don't know what their financial situation is. Supportive. The pressure she has in her mind. Sure. How am I paying the bills? Again, sure. she could be rich. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Right. But how do I pay the bills? How do I take care of my family? Supportive. But you know what? Supportive. The but support go ahead. I'm there. sorry. No, that's, that's what I'm getting at. I feel like he made all these decisions with his heart, and he's followed through with them. <laughs> Men like that don't grow on trees. I'm sorry. That's how I see this. Ladies and gentlemen, you know? including ourselves, open a chapter called the Bill DeMott chapter and learn some lessons. Yeah. Read some paragraphs for because sure. this guy is an example. For sure. Can, this, I be a, can I be a nerdy mark for a second? Because sure. you know I throw my wrestling in. Absolutely. Um, Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and all these other big dudes who flip and fly. Do you remember you, Boris, doing those flips, Bill DeMott doing flips? Absolutely. And a guy that size had no business doing. He was doing that back then. So everybody should cut him a check. Because I feel like, you know, he was one of those big guys who really could do things that a big guy wasn't really supposed to do until he started doing some of that stuff. And let's not forget the names yeah. that he's brought into this industry. Please. And he was the guy yeah. that started Bill Goldberg's career. Yeah. He was chosen yep. to be the guy to make sure that Bill got over the right way in the first match. There you go. He could have changed the course of history. He could have. He could have pulled the regal. <laughs> Well, to be honest with you, forget <laughs> about that. If he was a <clears throat> shitty wrestler, right. he could have just fucked it up anyway. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Anyway, it's an honor. Uh, we got Greg Valentine coming in in a few weeks. Wow. We've got another special guest who was supposed to come in next week, but we've okay. got a delay. Okay. But it's a wonderful surprise. I think everybody will really I enjoy. I'm surprised. I don't You'll be know. very surprised. I don't even know yet? It, um, or do I? You do know. I do. You just I like surprised anyway. Wow. But anyway, what an okay. honor, Bill DeMont. What an honor to Absolutely. have everybody watching us. Farrell, please. By the way, hmm. I love your Farrell's final questions. Yeah. Not so sure I like that one. This General time. Rection? No, it wasn't the joke. It was the whole Vince Rude. Like, I don't know. Like, Vince Rude, what made you think? And yeah, why? Because why? General Rection is stupid. But what makes you. It wasn't why his Bill fault. DeMott, he played the character why? fine, but. Oh, because he was General Rection. Yeah. Well, my other question was going to be, but we didn't do it. I'll have to do it next time. Would you have put Goldberg over, knowing what you know now? That's a good question. That is a good question. So we got something what in the What do you mean, knowing what you do know? Because you think he's a shitty wrestler? No. Just, you know. Just knowing what the career came well, As we saw the way it turned out. And Bill basically being like, I'm not putting anybody over. Screw you. <laughs> hey, well, this has been Mike you know, Monty. This has been the Pharaoh. You've been watching Monty and the Pharaoh. And until next week, to all our Fans, friends, and family. Later.